The ego is an illusion. It's not real. It's something you create. All you have to do is see through it. So how do I see through the illusion of the ego? By being present. By watching and seeing the behaviours that are not real. They're based in masks, belief systems, sufferings, fear. They always need a defence. They're nothing to do with love. When we start to experience our authentic being, we start to let go of these childish behaviours. Because in reality, they're just immaturity. There's something we created to protect ourselves, something to believe in, something to demonstrate, something to stop us from feeling so fragile and so insecure. We create a shell around something that hasn't matured. But as this matures, as the consciousness grows, the ego just starts to fall. It starts to lose its control and it lets go of the separation. So no, you don't have to kill it. You don't have to love it. You have to see through it. And see, I am not that. I'm not that. I'm not that. And it comes from the silence, that capacity. The expansion of consciousness. You know, the important thing about this system is we don't negate anything. We don't make anything wrong. It's not based in moralities. It's not based in avoiding or denying or sustaining or letting go of It's about seeing through. Once I see that this no longer serves, I just let it go. But not like this, like, oh, just, it no longer exists for me. It's a very embracing system. It's a tantric system. You move through. You move through. I see, I let go. I move through. And that's, it's gentle in that way. Because when people negate things, all their attention goes there. All the attention. But when you allow and you find something bigger, which is the love, that becomes the only thing important. I want to ask about the energy. We always listen to the term energy, and obviously we feel it. But what is really energy? The whole of creation's energy. All of it. It's just energy. Energy moving. And it's all the same energy. And we perceive everything as solid, but it's not solid. It's an illusion. It's everything's vibrating. Even rocks are vibrating. They're vibrating very slowly. And everything has a different vibration. But everything is the same energy. Everything's identical. It's all unconditional love. It's all one energy. The glue of creation and creation, it's all the same. So as we start to elevate our vibration, as it becomes lighter, there's more light. When energy is very dense, there's no light. But the vibration becomes faster and faster and faster. And that's when we start to experience love, peace, all of those vibrations that are based in unconditional love. And then it even goes beyond that, the vibration of divinity. 
even though everything's divinity, experiencing the vibration is because you've elevated your own vibration. You know, people think love's something external, but it's something internal. And as we have more and more energy, more and more vibration, more openness, more connection with creation, there's more light. When your body starts to dissolve, when you're unifying, you start to realise, oh, I'm not my body. Oh, I'm not separated from everything. In fact, I'm only my consciousness. And a lot of you will be having that experience as your consciousness expands, especially when you're unifying, no? So initially, when you're full of stress and judgments and egos and ideas and you're fighting against reality, when you have no concept of surrender, of flow, everything's dense, everything's hard. Everything's complicated. But when you're in a high vibration and you start to say yes, the illusion starts to fall. That's what surrender is. It's a distraction of the illusion. The distraction of the illusion of separation. We feel separated. That's why we're afraid of death. We feel small within this great scheme. But it's not true. We're not small. We are everything. And everything is within us. And as we expand our consciousness, we start to realise that we are infinite, not finite. And then our fear starts to leave. And what happens when our fear starts to leave? We start to flow. We start to trust. We start to unify with the whole instead of always protecting ourselves. And all of this comes from energy. You know, when I talk about the energetic portals opening, it's because they're unifying with totality. When they're closed, we're living in fear, density, ego, and separation. When we're open, we start to live in joy, the capacity to flow. And that's sometimes when people take drugs, they have these experiences, but they can't sustain the experience. It has a downside as well. But when you start to go into high levels of consciousness and you've cleaned your system and you can su sustain the high vibration, you start to experience this. This peace, this joy, this flow. Permanently. And the fear leaves. The fear leaves. Because you know you are the whole not a part of the whole. And surrender destroys the illusion. Hi, Yusha. Can you talk about ignorance and how does it affect our spiritual development? You know, ignorance is a natural behaviour because it means we're not experiencing our authenticity, our divinity. All we're experiencing is our programs. And we are ignorant because we think our programs are reality and we re respond and react from those programs. You know, humans do horrific things because they're afraid, because they think that they have to protect themselves. And this is ignorance. When you're experiencing consciousness and you're in the moment, the ignorance starts to fall. Why do people do horrific things? 
Because they're living in lack. Why are humans greedy and destructive? Because they're living in lack. Why are people jealous? Because they're living in lack. Because they can't see the greatness of who they are or the abundance that exists in reality. Why do we hurt others? Because we feel fragile and we want to protect ourselves. All of this is ignorance. And mostly it's because we're not present. We're just reacting and responding from some stupid program. And it could be a program of our great, 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 great grandmother. And we still think it's reality. That's ignorance. That's why I say to you, don't believe what I say. Start to question your own ideas. Start to experience yourself. Start to be present. Look at your programs, especially the programs that take you into suffering. We create our own suffering. The need to be right, the need to have a drama, the need to pull someone down because we don't feel good enough, the need to say no when we should be saying yes, the incapacity to open to receive love, all of that's born of ignorance. So how do we get past that? We have to start loving ourselves. Um, I can be here with myself. Oh, I can see reality. Oh, I can see that thought, that idea. Is that my idea? It's based in victimism. Because of something that happened when I was this big. Oh, I can let that go. Oh, what's that idea? Oh, that's something my grandma told me. Oh, what's that idea? Oh, it's something that happened to me. And bit by bit, we start letting go of what's not real. And we start to experience reality. And what is that reality? It's love. It's love. Here it is. Oh, I'm present in the moment. I'm not reacting and responding. I'm here, I'm listening, I'm open to receive. And the minute I'm open to receive, I'm open to change. And that's a big secret. We have so many predetermined ideas that we're not open to receive because we already have the response. I know how you are. You are always like that. Ignorance. I change. Everything changes. Everything. As I clean my window of perception, everything starts to change. And we start to live in our hearts. In a week, I'm traveling back. Oh. Don't cry. <laughs> I want to give you thanks from the depth of my heart for everything. My process has been incredible, and I feel that I changed completely. And the part that I felt it changed the most is the part of being submissive and making myself little and being the good girl, to be standing in my own power and be myself. And I would love you if you can talk a little bit more about this. Okay. What is it to stand in your own power? We're taught so many ways of behaving to receive love. And there's all these actions and ideas to do with femininity, or masculinity, or whatever. 
And we think if we don't do these things, we won't be loved. So what happens when we find our authentic being? We just start to be natural. We stop doubting in ourselves and we start speaking our truths. But from a place of love, that transformation from being submissive to being empowered is just more love. It's not aggression. It's not fighting. It's just a clarity that comes from the greatness of who we are. And that's the greatest gift you can give to anyone. The freedom to be yourself without any idea of how that needs to look. Not submissive, not aggressive, not controlling, just clarity. Clarity and consciousness. And from that space, we develop more love, more unity, better communication. Because if I'm empowered, I can empower everyone. If I'm living in duality, doubting myself, begging for love, feeling needy, and then becoming a victim, what do I create? All of those things. I don't create power. I don't create love. I create manipulation and games. And we can't live in games anymore. If we don't love ourselves, no one will love us. The mirror will just show a certain aspect. But when we love ourselves unconditionally, we can open completely to receive love. And this is how relationships should be. I am open to receive your love unconditionally. I am open to give my love unconditionally. And it allows each person to fly in every aspect of your life. Because when you don't trust in yourself, you don't trust in anything. You're living in fear. Who wants to live like that? In duality, in doubting, not knowing who you are, pretending, masking, resenting, fighting. Who wants to live like that? Nobody quashes us. We do it to ourselves. I used to be submissive. You choose to be submissive. You know, I've got two wolves. And I know, without a question of a doubt, that the black one is, could destroy the macho. She's much stronger. She's much more lobo. She's like really smart. And he's really cute. And como bobo, no? You know, but he's very handsome. And I see her. She does all these little games with him. She gets down and she's like, oh, 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 oh. And he's over her going, oh. And she's like, oh, oh. And I look at her sometimes and I think, what are you doing? And she, she looks at me and she goes, it's a wolf thing, don't worry. <laughs> and whenever he looks at another wolf, another dog, if she looks at another... Oh, he just goes ballistic. And she does the same thing again. Gets on the ground. And I wonder where humans learnt to do all of this. I think it came from nature, no? Because really, she is feroce. She could destroy anything. 
But when it comes to keeping him entertained, she does all this game. But if he looks at another dog, then the story changes. Huh? There's no so much, ow, oh, ow, oh, ow, oh, ow. Oh. So it's an interesting thing. You need to see where you're not being real. You need to see where you're playing a role. And you just need to be you. All of you. Just be ourselves. Just to be empowered and to be the best of who we are. Why we don't value ourselves and it's so hard to see ourselves in our, in our real value? Because we're taught not to. We're taught there's something wrong with us. And it's literally because of these roles. From the moment we're born, once we're like two years old, everyone tries to change us. You don't do this, you don't say that, you don't act like this, you don't feel this, you don't do that in public, you believe in this. We have all these ideas and people impose them on us because they think they're protecting us. And they think that that's love. They teach us what to say, how to be, what to feel, what not to feel, what to believe, depending on where we're born. All of these things. We're told where God is, what he looks like, what will happen if you don't love him. And we're like, Okay. We lose our authenticity. And it's a constant thing from this age. Don't cry, don't shout, don't fight, don't, 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 don't feel. Tell the truth, not that truth. You see how it happens. So we end up like this. Like um, schizophrenic, like we don't know what to do. Should I say this? Shouldn't I say this? Should have I said that? We get so confused. And we think that all the love's external. So we have to balance it. And then we have to control it. And all that control is exhausting. Because if we lose the control, we lose the love. And because that's the love, we can't exist. We need that love. Now, if we have this love from the beginning, that unique essence, and we focus on that, and we have this internal security, we make our own discoveries, about our emotions, about how we feel. We communicate with others from a place of love. Everything that comes from the place of consciousness is based in the actions of love. Because we have this idea that if we don't control everyone, everything will be out of control. But everything is out of control. It's focused on fear, focused on lack, focused on illusion. And our authenticity, the gift we have to give to humanity, is gone. What is it? Why am I here? What am I doing? Where am I meant to go? What am I meant to achieve? And we get this skeleton program. And says so you do this, 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 this. It's a very basic program. You know, it's like that. And everything's in a future moment. When you grow up, 
when you get married, oh no, hang on, when you grow up, when you go to school, when you go to college, when you get married, when you have children, when you retire, when, 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 when. You will be happy. But no one checked. Nobody checked to see if it was true. Because they were so emitted in it that we can't see reality. And we fight for things that make us suffer. We could be in the most horrible marriage, but we need to stay there because if not, I failed. Oh, I failed one of the boxes. You need to have children. If you don't have children, oh, I failed one of the boxes. There's all these ideas because everything's in a future moment. So what if we taught children to be present? To enjoy each moment. To give. To share. To be transparent. To speak the truth. To create. To evolve. To take care of the planet. To love the planet and each other as we love ourselves. To be innocent. Can you imagine the capacity people have to create? Can you imagine how phenomenal all these humans would be if they didn't have a list of how, what they need to do and everything was coming from love? Can you imagine a world like that? No one's going to be going off to war. No one's going to abuse anyone else because they don't believe in the same thing. And all of this, all of the problems in the world come from lack of love. All of them. Look how many billions we've spent on arms. Everyone's got arms. No one can use them because if I use them, they'll use them and then he'll use them and poof, no more planet. But we're protecting ourselves. Imagine if we're focused on something different. Imagine. It's incredible, no? So I forgot the question. I got onto my political campaign, you know. Free the world, make it a better place. <laughs> it's not bad. It's about us loving ourselves. And it's not that there's something wrong. But things can be better. And it starts with us experiencing love. It's as simple as that. I want to ask you about the activities when we go out to the world. The works or activities that maybe have to stimulate more an intellectual part, a logical part, to see if the power of our programs will be activated also, and the difference of being more creative activities. And that can affect our growth. You know, to be present in the moment and using your intellect and creativity is perfect. The problem with the mind is no one uses it. They, no one uses it. They use it like a mousetrap to suffer. It's always creating this duality. You know, even the most brilliant minds we're only using 10%. This is a machine beyond any computer. But the problem is, it has the control. It controls us. We think we're controlling it. 
But it's not true. This is the puppeteer. And it's creating an illusion of suffering. Now, when we sit in consciousness and we start to use our intellects to create, to enhance, to e everything starts to change. So, what is the important thing? That I'm here, here in this moment. And I have the capacity to govern my head, to decide what serves and what doesn't serve. There's nothing wrong with the intellect. It's a beautiful machine. Look at what scientific advancements have been made. It's a phenomenon. You look at the greatest computer and it's not even close to the human mind. But we have to govern it. So every time I move into action, I'm here now. I'm in my heart. And that's where the creativity comes from. And this is where I put it into action. But allow the creativity. Discover the new. Open to unlimited possibilities. This is how humanity needs to live. Here. Here. And using this to make things realised. Yeah, so no, it doesn't affect your spirituality. But you have to use it correctly. If you're here worrying, 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 worrying about the future, worrying about focused on your addictions, pa 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 all over the place. It affects you. It affects your body. It affects your life. It's not positive. It doesn't enhance anything. But if you're here and moving like that. Everything's sharp. Everything's clear. Everything's brilliant. Everything's creative. Everything's in the moment. Can you talk about what means to fall in love once with self? If that means that we are going to love our fails, our flaws, or as we enhance our consciousness, our flaws disappear. You know, firstly, you don't have any flaws. You're perfectly human, exactly as you are. You're perfect exactly as you are. The problem is you're asleep. You're asleep and you're living in a dream, in this little bubble. And the bubble has to pop and unite with totality. So, as you start to love yourself, you start to clean your window of perception. As you heal your own problems, your own dramas, your own separations, as you eliminate all the stress and anxiety from your body, you start to have a clear vision. Instead of seeing what's wrong, you start to see the perfection. You start to become the facet. And the more you're in the present moment and you're embracing your humanity and letting the more negative, the slower vibrations go, you start to experience more love. It's a transformation. It doesn't mean what is now is bad or wrong. It's perfect, perfectly human, perfectly dual. But you're trying to go beyond that now. You're trying to become the vibration permanently of unconditional love, to experience that. And that's what the facets are for. Love creates me in my perfection. There's nothing wrong with anyone. And you've never done anything wrong. You are love in evolution, evolving. 
Come visit our web page for books, movies, and our wonderful retreat centers. Isha's simple yet powerful system is transforming lives around the world.